Hello, and welcome to today's exploration of one of the most remarkable figures in engineering history, Isambard Kingdom Brunel. I've long been fascinated by Brunel's innovative spirit and the indelible mark he left on Britain's infrastructure. Born in 1806, Brunel was a man who truly embodied the spirit of the Industrial Revolution, pushing the boundaries of what was possible in civil and mechanical engineering. His name has become synonymous with ambition, innovation, and a certain daring that defined an era of rapid technological advancement. What strikes me most about Brunel is not just the scale of his projects, but the breadth of his expertise. This wasn't a man content to specialize in one area. He built bridges, tunnels, dockyards, and even revolutionized ship design. His vision for the Great Western Railway wasn't just about laying tracks. It was about creating an integrated transport system that could take you from London to New York changing from train to steamship seamlessly. It's this holistic approach to engineering problems that I find particularly inspiring. Brunel built dockyards, the Great Western Railway, a series of steamships including the first purpose-built transatlantic steamship, and numerous important bridges and tunnels. His designs revolutionized public transport and modern engineering. Let's delve into what I consider Brunel's magnum opus, the Great Western Railway. In 1833, Brunel was appointed chief engineer of this ambitious project, and it's here that we really see his genius come to the fore. What fascinates me is how Brunel approached this not just as an engineering challenge, but as an opportunity to redefine what rail travel could be. He wasn't content with simply connecting London to Bristol. He wanted to create the smoothest, fastest, most efficient railway possible. One of Brunel's most controversial decisions was the use of a broad gauge of 7 feet and a quarter inch, rather than the standard gauge of 4 feet 8 and a half inches. This wasn't mere stubbornness or a desire to be different. Brunel believed, based on his calculations, that this broader gauge would allow for greater stability at high speeds and increased passenger comfort. It's a testament to his confidence in his own engineering principles that he was willing to go against the established norms in pursuit of what he believed to be a superior system. One controversial feature was the broad gauge of 7F14 in 2140 meters, instead of what was later to be known as standard gauge of 4F8 plus 12 in 1435 meters. The Great Western Railway wasn't just about the tracks, though. Brunel's vision extended to every aspect of the railway experience. Take Paddington Station, for instance. Completed in 1854, it's a masterpiece of Victorian engineering and architecture. The vast train shed, with its intricate wrought iron and glass roof, was designed to impress and inspire passengers as they began or ended their journeys. It's still a breathtaking sight today, and I often find myself marvelling at it whenever I pass through. While the Great Western Railway might be Brunel's most famous project, I've always been particularly impressed by his bridges. These structures aren't just functional, they're works of art that have stood the test of time. The Clifton Suspension Bridge, spanning the Avon Gorge in Bristol, is perhaps the most iconic. Begun in 1831, it wasn't actually completed until after Brunel's death, but its design, a graceful span of 702 feet, was revolutionary for its time. What I find fascinating about the Clifton Suspension Bridge is how it embodies Brunel's approach to engineering challenges. He wasn't content with simply building a functional bridge. He wanted to create something that would inspire awe and push the boundaries of what was possible. The slender towers and the sweeping cables aren't just structural elements. They're a statement of engineering prowess and aesthetic vision. It's a bridge that doesn't just cross a gorge. It seems to float above it. Of all the wonderful feats I have performed since I have been in this part of the world, I think yesterday I performed the most wonderful. I produced unanimity among 15 men who were all quarrelling about that most ticklish subject, taste. But the Clifton Suspension Bridge wasn't Brunel's only remarkable bridge. The Royal Albert Bridge, spanning the River Tamar at Saltash, is another testament to his ingenuity. Completed in 1859, just before Brunel's death, it's a unique design combining suspension and truss principles. What impresses me most about this bridge 
is how it solved the problem of spanning a wide, navigable river without impeding shipping. The two main spans, each 455 feet long, are high enough to allow tall ships to pass underneath, while still providing a stable platform for trains to cross. Brunel's engineering genius wasn't confined to land. He also made significant contributions to maritime engineering. What I find particularly fascinating is how he applied his innovative thinking to shipbuilding, creating vessels that were far ahead of their time. His series of three ships, the Great Western, the Great Britain, and the Great Eastern, each represented a significant leap forward in naval architecture and marine engineering. The SS Great Britain, launched in 1843, is particularly noteworthy. This was the first ocean-going ship to have an iron hull and a screw propeller, and at the time, she was the largest ship in the world. What impresses me most about the Great Britain is how forward-thinking its design was. Brunel had become convinced of the superiority of propeller-driven ships over paddle wheels, and he was proved right. The use of an iron hull was also revolutionary, providing greater strength and allowing for larger ships than had previously been possible with wooden construction. Great Britain is considered the first modern ship, being built of metal rather than wood, powered by an engine rather than wind or oars, and driven by propeller rather than paddle wheel. She was the first iron-hulled, propeller-driven ship to cross the Atlantic Ocean. But it was the SS Great Eastern that truly showcased Brunel's ambition and foresight. Designed for voyages to India and Australia, this behemoth was nearly 700 feet long and could carry over 4,000 passengers. What's remarkable to me is that Brunel designed this ship to cruise non-stop from London to Sydney and back, believing that Australia had no coal reserves. While this assumption proved incorrect, it demonstrates Brunel's ability to think on a global scale and anticipate future needs. The Great Eastern was so far ahead of its time that it remained the largest ship built until the start of the 20th century. As I reflect on Brunel's career and achievements, what strikes me most is the enduring impact of his work. Many of his creations are still in use today, over a century and a half after his death. The Clifton Suspension Bridge, for instance, continues to carry traffic across the Avon Gorge, while the Thames Tunnel, his first major project, is now part of the London Overground Network. It's a testament to the quality and foresight of his engineering that these structures have stood the test of time, but Brunel's legacy extends far beyond the physical structures he left behind. His innovative approach to engineering problems, his willingness to challenge conventional wisdom, and his ability to think on a grand scale have inspired generations of engineers. In 2002, Brunel was voted the second greatest Briton of all time in a BBC poll, second only to Winston Churchill. This recognition, nearly a century and a half after his death, speaks volumes about the lasting impact of his work and the enduring fascination with his life and achievements. In 2002, Brunel was placed second in a BBC public poll to determine the 100 greatest Britons. As we conclude our exploration of Brunel's life and work, I'm struck by how relevant his approach to engineering remains today. In an era of rapid technological change and global challenges, Brunel's ability to think holistically, to see connections between different fields, and to envision solutions on a grand scale is perhaps more valuable than ever. His life serves as an inspiration not just to engineers, but to anyone who seeks to push the boundaries of what's possible and leave a lasting mark on the world. As we come to the end of our journey through the life and works of Isambard Kingdom Brunel, I'm left with a profound sense of admiration for this titan of engineering. His vision, his ambition, and his relentless pursuit of innovation continue to inspire and challenge us today. From the Great Western Railway to the SS Great Britain, from the Clifton Suspension Bridge to the Box Tunnel, Brunel's creations weren't just feats of engineering. They were transformative projects that shaped the very landscape of Britain and changed the way people lived and travelled. What I find particularly compelling about Brunel's legacy is how it continues to evolve and inspire new generations. His works aren't just historical artefacts, they're living, breathing parts of our modern infrastructure. 
The Great Western Railway, for instance, still forms the backbone of Britain's rail network, while the SS Great Britain, now restored and serving as a museum ship in Bristol, continues to educate and inspire visitors about the golden age of steam and iron. It's a testament to Brunel's foresight that so many of his creations remain relevant and functional in the 21st century. Brunel's vision and engineering innovations made the building of large-scale, propeller-driven, all-metal steamships a practical reality, but the prevailing economic and industrial conditions meant that it would be several decades before transoceanic steamship travel emerged as a viable industry. As we face the engineering challenges of our own era, from sustainable energy to space exploration, I believe we would do well to remember Brunel's example. His willingness to think big, to challenge conventions, and to see engineering as a holistic discipline that could reshape society are qualities that remain as valuable today as they were in the 19th century. Brunel's life reminds us that great achievements often come from daring to imagine what others believe impossible and then having the skill and determination to make those visions a reality.